me again and this time we are cooking Weight Watchers. Now that doesn't mean that because you do Slimming World you can't do Weight Watchers because that's just silly because a slimming um, plan um, is healthy eating and Weight Watchers and Slimming World they're all healthy eating or calorie counting they're all the same thing in my book. So if you want to carry on watching I am going to be making a tomato and basil risotto, but I'm going to be making it with a bit of a twist. So, what are you going to need? Well, it's pretty cheap ingredients. Oh, just, that's a good start, isn't it? I'm going to need that. So, it's pretty cheap ingredients. I have got um, salt and pepper, tomato puree, and risotto rice. The leftovers of some um, smoked lardon, bacon lardons, but you don't need to put that in if you don't want to. Some mushrooms that need eating up. A rather sad looking basil leaf. This is why I don't have house plants. Stay at that. Onion, garlic, oil, yogurt, and a tin of tomatoes. And I've got one little sad tomato left on his tod in the bowl. So we're going to use him up as well. And I've got two chicken stock cubes and 20 fluid ounces of hot water making up a stock. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to chop an onion quickly, which I should have done previously to coming on and talking to you lot. So I'm going to just quickly... I broke my blooming nail and I can't grab hold of anything now. It's a blooming nuisance, isn't it, when you break your nails? <laughs> when you've got long nails and you use them, you, you don't realise how much you use them. So I broke that one, then I went and broke that one. Not that one, that one. So it's a, they look awful now. Right, anyway, enough of my nails. So, chop an onion. Up. So I've chopped up my onion and I'm going to spray like my pan. Then I'm going to add in my onion. And mushroom. And I've got some garlic cloves as well. So my garlic press is pretty useless. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crush my garlic with a knife. Literally just put your knife on top of your garlic and just crush it down. Whoop daisy! <laughs> Without him running away from you. Oh, like that. <laughs> God. Where'd that go? Oh. I'll pick it up because I don't want to be eating that. Ugh. Right. So we've got our garlic, our onions and mushrooms in there. Just going to give it another little spray. Then in this little saucepan, I'm going to put my chopped tomato. And my can of tomatoes. I'm just going to check if it's a whole can. Yeah. I didn't buy chopped ones, so I'm just going to chop it up. And I'm going to give it a good season of salt and pepper. And then to that, I'm going to rip in some basil leaf.
And I'm going to put that on a slow heat. Or even a low heat. There we go. I'll just keep my eye on that. So, stirring in our vegetables, we are then going to add our rice. And you need three and a half ounces of rice. That's for two people. So about a quarter of a packet. And then mix the rice dry in the frying pan so you get all the um, bits of oil and juice from the onion and the mushrooms coating those little grains of risotto rice. So it looks like that and then what you're going to do is you're going to start adding your stock a little bit at a time and stirring now what you have to do with a risotto is stand with it and stir it the more you stir it the creamier it will become because you get the creaminess coming out of the, the rice while you're stirring it You've got to put a bit of love in there. So keep stirring your rice around and as your um, liquid dissolves you add a little bit more and then you stir a little bit more and you add a little bit more. Now this is going to take about half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour now when your rice is cooked, you'll be able to get a grain of rice and squish it between your fingers. At the moment, it's rock hard. <laughs> it's just like you get out of a packet. But when it's cooked, that rice, that rice grain will squish between your fingers soft and it will be cooked. So, I'm just gonna add a little bit more now because I've got to that, it's all gone. There we go little bit at a time, a bit more stirring and I'll keep doing that and then I'll come back to you. Right, I'm just going to be adding the half pack of um, smoked lardons that I've got in the fridge. If you've got a bit of chicken you could put in there or just some normal ham you could put it in, put that in as well. Um, or if you had some bacon medallions you could put those in chop them up and put them in. So I'm still adding my stock at the moment. I have turned it down a little bit. And my tomatoes are still cooking nicely in my pan with the basil and the pepper and the salt. What I might do is I've got some garlic granules here. So I might add a little bit of garlic granule to that. A bit of extra flavour. All the dogs are going mad out here at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> She's joined in now. So yeah, so keep stirring away, making it all nice and creamy, cooking away and um, we will soon be there. So that's what it looks like at the moment. Some of you have already seen this um, back along. I was doing like, some stone painting. Anyway, I've done a bit more stone painting today, so I thought you might like to see what I've been doing. But for those of you who haven't seen my stone painting, I just thought I'd show you quickly um, ones that I've done. So, this is, um, I did this for Poppy Day, and it says, um, lest we forget, I know it's back to front for you. <laughs> it's gone a bit faded though, because I had it in the garden, and um, I did that for remembrance for poppies. So that was that one, and it's just on like a garden stone uh, that I whitewashed on the front and then painted it. 
on there. So that was that one. And then I did a ladybird for the garden. And he's got a little bit of red glitter on him. So that's him. And then, oh, I did a camper van. And it's got my husband's initials on it. And then it's got like um, little flowers going around the outside. And that's um, his camper van. And then I did one when I lost my dad. Um, this is Kisses from Heaven. And um, that was just like an angel looking after us and looking over us, um, sent from my dad. And that says Kisses from Heaven. So that was my little remembrance stone for my dad. And then more recently, um, I'm going to see um, one of my best friends on Saturday, Susan, SW Susan. And um, she, was, she asked me if I'd do one for her daughter. So I had some slate in the garden that I'd picked up um, recently. And um, I thought, oh, that might do a quite nice, um, you know, like a stone. Anyway, she wanted something for her daughter who loves bluebells. So this says, and it's back to front, it says, Forever My Bluebell. And it's got lots of glitter on it and stars. And I need to varnish it yet, and that's a little heart there. Um, but yeah, so that one's for Miss Susan to give to her daughter. So yeah, they're my little stones. So, and I just use clear uh, varnish to put over them. And then if you want to put them in the garden, you can. Um, they'll last a bit longer. If I was to put that in the garden, it'd be ruined. So all that hard work, would, um, yeah, would go to waste. So you must varnish them. I used to varnish them with nail varnish remover, um, nail varnish, clear nail varnish, um, and the little nail varnish pots. But oh, I used to use so much of it, and it never dried very well. Um, so I bought some um, some proper nail. Uh, it's proper um, like yacht uh, clear varnish and I use that and um, it keeps the colours a lot nicer so how are we doing well I'm just going to do a little test on my rice the grains have swollen up and it's still a little bit hard I can feel it a little bit hard there so it does need yeah about five more minutes I would say so what I'm gonna do is the last five minutes I'm gonna add my tomato and the juice from that will also help absorb and cook the remainder of that rice so I'm just gonna Put it through. There we go. And then I'm just going to let that soak up some of those juices. Now you can see there is absolutely masses here. More than two people's worth. <laughs> this would feed a family of four easy. You do, don't need a lot of rice. It goes a long way. So I'll let that cook down and then I'll come right. back to you. So I've just tried it and it is absolutely delicious. It's really, really tasty and flavoursome. And I feel that is so nice, so, so nice. I did forget to tell you that I put a good slug of um, tomato puree in, um, into my tomato and tin tomatoes that were simmering. I put a good squidge of that in there. So I've switched it off. Now the way I know that my risotto is ready is this little trick. You don't want a risotto to be too dry, but you don't want it to be too wet either. What you want is when you get your spoon or whatever and you slide it through, it separates and slowly comes back to together. Can you see that? So I'll do it again. So it's coming away and then it's slowly coming back together. It's not all sloppy, but it's not dry either. And that's how you know when your risotto is ready, as well as doing the little uh, rice test and of course tasting it. 
So I'm going to quickly dish up now. Get myself a spoon. And all I'm going to do is put a nice good portion of this in a bowl. And then on top of that, I'm going to add, see what I'm doing, um, a little bit of natural yogurt on top with a cracker pepper and optional you can put a little bit of parmigiano or a little bit of um, low fat cheese sprinkled on top and there you have it a tomato well it's not just tomato is it mine's got mushrooms and bacon risotto but absolutely delicious and half an hour and you have got a winning dish give it a go give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this don't forget to subscribe and enjoy your evening see you again soon take care